Rub up your engines! Well, if you're gonna buy a modern, really high-tech car, realize one thing, that high-tech cars and cracked windshields are not a good mix. They have all kinds of sensors built into the windshield. Some of them have pop-up displays. Some of them have crash warning stuff inside them. Unlike the old car where there's a windshield, they pop it out and pop a new one in, replacing them isn't that easy or cheap because like I say some have cameras and so when your windshield breaks it's going to cost you a fortune to get it replaced and it goes so far enough that Ford recently advised that bumper covers on a modern cars that have all the sensors that have advanced driver assistance systems need to be replaced it's not just replacing it then the whole system has to be reprogrammed with different signs around driven in an area and the computer's got to reprogram it's a very complex thing you can easily run into thousands of dollars to replace think about it probably now it'll be cars get a cracked windshield when they're old or the bumper gets broken they'll total the car because if it's going to cost thousands of dollars and you got an old car the insurance companies right they got to fix things to make them safe and those are safety related so they will have to fix that stuff legally if you have coverage but they'll say well that's going to be too much they'll total your car because your bumper got broken or the windshield got cracked I, I hate to see that stuff myself perfectly good cars will be totaled because this computer stuff costs too much money to fix. Realize you're buying that stuff, there's a real downside to it. When you get in a wreck or something gets smashed, even something as simple as the windshield gets hit with a rock, hey, you can be in deep doo-doo for expensive repairs as these things age. Think about that before you buy another high-tech car. I got an email from a fan, Russell, and he says, Scotty, I've been leasing a 2019 Subaru Impressa. It's great in the snow, but I don't trust it. I have 34,000 miles on it and the transmission just went out and it burns a quart of oil in between oil changes. A few months into the lease, I noticed how cheap everything felt. Please do not recommend these cars to people. I can't wait till my lease is up. On the other hand, can I trust their Toyota Corolla CVT to last 200,000 miles? Well, yeah, you can. They're well made. Now, it just goes to show what I've been saying for ages about Subarus. They still haven't perfected the things. That's a 2019. The transmission already went out. It burns oil. They just don't have the quality of say Toyota and Honda. Subaru, Fuji Heavy Industries, it's a huge corporation. Cars are a tiny bit of their business. They really don't care that much about it. And obviously his tranny already went out. His engine burns oil. It's a 2019 with 34,000 miles. That's unheard of stuff in a Toyota or a Honda. You don't want to be in that situation. Listen to me and other people. Do a lot of research before you buy a car. Well, here we go again with Mazda. It's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. Now they say their MX-30 plug-in hybrid will have the rotary engine generator in it. They're always messing around with rotary engines at Mazda, only this time they're not using it to run the car. They're using it as a backup generator to recharge the battery when the battery goes bad. As Mazda says, we confirm next year's launch timing for the Mazda MX-30 plug-in. It will operate as a series plug-in hybrid with a rotary generator. So they're going to have a little rotary motors in them. Their theory is that to make the powertrain system work, the MX-30 would have to have a huge battery that costs a lot of money and weigh a lot using the rotary backup generator to get things going when you run out of electricity is a logical thing to do and they said it's going to launch in the u.s and california first then the rest of the country later and they try all that stuff out in california and then a year later they'll have a plug-in hybrid the one that they're launching is going to be battery only and then the little generator will add to it of course if you got a plug-in hybrid you don't need a generator you already have a battery and a gasoline motor so you wouldn't need it. they're using it basically as a range extender like bmw did in their little electric car that they just stopped making it had a BMW motorcycle engine two cylinder that was running the generator after the battery ran out of power because it only had like 90 miles of range with the battery so it'd be the same thing with this Mazda MX-30 start out as an electric car and then they're going to switch it to a hybrid which is kind of funny because usually it's the other way around they start out as a hybrid and then they turn them into electric well this is going to start out as an electric and then move to a hybrid okay some says all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive are there any cars that have all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive can they have both systems there's so many different combinations and I've driven cars that had an all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive system two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive there's all kinds of different systems out there you can just imagine everything with modern computers can that could be done has been done by somebody the ultra rich they figure they just want all-wheel drive all the time so it handles ice snow whatever can go fast can go slow and they just stay on all-wheel drive all the time but there's many systems that can be switched back and forth some are mechanical most today's are electronic 
and you can push the buttons. I was in a Ford the other day. It had everything. You could have four-wheel drive low, high. You could put it in neutral, so then it was only two-wheel drive. There were a million things you could do with it. With modern technology and computers, yeah, you can mix all the systems you want. So if you're going to buy one, do a little research and decide what do you really want. Because you don't want to pay extra for something you're not going to really use all that much. And realize with all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive system, the price goes up, the gas mileage goes down, and repair prices can get astronomical. Understand that. Commandarian says, British motoring. I was wondering if you could do a video on Rolls Royce, especially the Merlin motor, same as you did for Japanese brands. One of the reasons you and me don't speak German at the moment. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> It is fascinating, the Merlin motor. Of course, they never used them in cars. You're talking about aviation. Rolls-Royce was always at the forefront of aviation, and they're still pretty good today. Realize a long time ago, the Rolls-Royce aviation split off from the cars, and now, if you want to sprechen Sie Deutsch, BMW owns Rolls-Royce, and they got V12 BMW German engines in So maybe ultimately they did win the war, and they took Rolls-Royce over and put German engines in them. <laughs> So, yeah, the Rolls Royce Aviation was always a high tech corporation. You know, the cars, yeah, maybe way, way, way back when, but now they're just BMWs, basically. And even when they were doing the English scene, they were still buying their V12 engines from BMW and putting them in Rolls Royces in England. Times have changed, but the aviation, jet engines and stuff, Rolls Royce is still big on that. You know, they're a very good engineering company. There's no arguing that. Cars, ah, it's a German company now. They didn't win in the long run. <laughs> Matthew Cha says, I'm in big trouble. I need help. My dad's stuck in Mississippi. We got an oil change on a Toyota Tundra 5.7, and the guy forget to put the oil cap back on. Now he's stuck in Mississippi on his way to Tennessee. He filled it up, but now the engine makes all kinds of noises. What should I do? If you want to keep that thing forever, it's a Toyota Tundra. They're great, but the engine's destroyed. My advice, find a good quality rebuilt, totally rebuilt engine. I was looking for my grandson in case he ever wanted to do his over because his has almost 300,000 miles on it. And I found one for like, I think it was like six grand and it looked like it was really rebuilt by a quality guy. Put that in and do it right. Now, on the other hand, if you're low on funds, try to find a junkyard that has one that's willing to install it. Because if you pay a regular mechanic, it's going to cost thousands of thousands to do the whole job. Junkyard guys work cheap and they pull engines in and out all the time. It's not that hard getting the engine out of that. It's a pickup truck. You take the hood off, get a cherry picker, pick the engine out, put another one in. So if you can find a good used engine, you might want to try that route. But if you want to keep it forever, my advice, get a quality remanufactured one, put it in, and it'll probably go another three, four hundred thousand miles. Big Joe 1967 said, good afternoon. I live in Montreal and I got a 2015 Subaru Forester with 310,000 miles on it. I like that you use my miles because you're in Montreal instead of kilometers. I like old school. I don't like this kilometer nonsense. The rattle starts when I accelerate, but you don't hear it at high speeds. And then it comes back when I decelerate and prior to coming to a stop. Sounds like the exhaust. Okay, I can just about guarantee your catalytic converters starting to come apart. The catalytic converters burn hydrocarbons and they do it by these honeycomb structures. They have little honeycomb holes in them that have platinum in them, but they're ceramic. And as they age, they crack and they start to rattle. Now, as long as it runs okay, temperature's normal, accelerates, you could live with the rattling. But eventually, when pieces break off, they jam in the exhaust, then they build up pressure, and the engine starts to run hotter, and it'll only go a certain speed because it can't breathe air out. So, go under the catalytic converter, hit it with a metal hammer, and if it rattles, you know, the catalytic converter's starting to go out. But I've had people drive them years that way. As long as they're just rattling inside and pieces don't break off, it's okay to drive. It's just when they do break off, they clog things up, and then you have to replace it. It's not going to hurt it by getting sucked into the engine because it's pushing the gas out and it's in the back, so it won't hurt anything. It'll just eventually make it overheat, not go too fast, and run poorly. Then you'd have to replace it. Chris Yariza 205 says, I just passed my road test, but not quite sure what used car should I buy. Any suggestion? When a 2011 plus. If you want a good car that can run forever and you're not a car maniac, get a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic. They can run forever. You want to go a little more upscale and pay a lot more? Get a Toyota a Camry or a Honda Accord. They're great cars. Let's say you want a sporty car. Get a Mazda Miata. They can run forever and they're well-made cars too. That's kind of what I would stick with from there. Further on, there's so many choices that aren't quite as well-made, but those would be ones you should start with. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.